didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning, said legendary rocker, music, music artist, Billy Joel. Welcome to IOU Industry Outlaws United. Uh, I'm your host, Brandon E. Brooks. Right next to me is the man with the Indie Escape plan, Mr. Joe Ridgely. How are you, Joe? I am excellent. Excited to be back on a Friday night, man. I missed it last week. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I apologize, but not really, because I, I had a pretty good time at uh, the PA Horicon last week in Allentown, PA, with a lot of great, great guests and some friends. So, uh, so yeah, it was a good time. If you, if anybody that's on my social media, I posted some photos from it. And uh, those are just good times. Like good people run the show and they always have great people that, that attend it from the celebs and just the staff and the all the volunteers. Everybody's just really, really cool. So uh, I always make it a point of uh, making that one of the shows that uh, that I frequent. So, so yeah, it was good times. And shout out to Chris Majors, uh, one of the agents of all the people for always making me feel welcome. And Christine Elise, who will be on the show in April, like it's like just an amazing, amazing actress from from uh, from a lot of stuff that you know, like Child's Play two and and we again, get Alex new, also. And, yes, yes, absolutely, yes. The new Chucky show. Uh, so yeah, she's she's just an amazing soul, and uh, yeah, just just had a great time with a lot of great people. So uh, so yes, it was preempted last week, but uh, but we're back this week. I want to give a shout out to the last guest from two weeks ago, uh, Brooke Lewis Bellas. She actually sent a an amazing uh, autograph photo and and a couple more to myself and uh, and some and three lucky winners from the last show. So I want to thank her. That was very much appreciated. Uh, she was an amazing, amazing guest that we'll have back on a producer's panel upcoming. And uh, it looks like Joe might have one, too, to share. Ah, to there it favorite. is. Nice, nice. We got a few of them, but this is definitely the favorite. <laughs> yes, I had a few as well. Miss Vampy, yes. So thank you, Brooke. Thank you so much. I said it online, but I, wa I wanted to say it live. Uh, you're, you're, you're very much... Uh, a family now to the Indie Escape Network, and uh, and we appreciate you. So, uh, yeah. So, Joe, what's new on your? Uh, what's new for you? Uh, I know we have a new, uh, uh, we have a new person that's uh, hosting a show on our network. We do. Scotty is doing stage diving with Scotty. It's going to be an indie music show that's going to be on Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern. If you guys didn't catch it yesterday, go to our YouTube channel or Facebook page and check it out. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So um, I just uh, let's just get this party started tonight. Uh, can we please play our uh, our tribute video to our guests for tonight, please? Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs>
That was freaking amazing. Holy cow. Uh, welcome to IOU, actress of film, stage, television, the amazing Sandra Santiago. Hi. Ah, hi, how are you? That was uh, that was pretty. I, I the, the many faces of some. <laughs> <laughs> the many many faces, many. Oh, wait, wait, I gotta ask. What's very what? impressive? Who put that together? I, 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 I put that. Spoke. You did. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I do it every week for every guest. Just uh, oh, just as amazing. just kind of a love, just kind of a love letter to the the, the guests and, and everything like that. So uh, so what no, were you gonna ask, no, Joe? Uh, I'm sorry. Before I drop down, I, I just have to ask what the event was with Michael Jordan, if I may. Michael Jordan. Mm. Uh, well, I I sang the national anthem. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yep. Joe, I can't hear Joe, but I, I sang when I was when I was in Miami doing Miami Vice. Mm -hmm. uh, I sang the national anthem for the the Red Sox game. Uh, no, for the uh, uh, Mets in 1986, and oh. for the third World Series game, and I I sang it very well. And then all of a sudden, I was getting booked to sing the national anthem. Mm. And so my my um, uh, publicist at the time, my local publicist on, on at, in Miami uh, got, you know, got me to sing the national anthem when the, Michael Jordan, what was the first team he was on? Chicago Bulls, yes. Okay, they were in Miami. Yeah. Playing I guess Miami Heat, yeah, probably, or or Miami might, Heat. yeah, yeah. I think they were playing the Heat. Yeah. And so I sang the anthem, and then I went, I went back to the, uh, you know, and well, awesome. uh, I got to meet him. Awesome. And he was awesome. so nice. Awesome. He was really nice, awesome. and I was very charmed by him. But uh, I, you know, I think he was married, so I sort of just. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mess with other women's men <laughs> in those <Gosh>. days. I <laughs> mess with any men now because I have he's, he's in the bedroom right now. <laughs> I'll ask you a question about that later to give some okay. advice, <laughs> but yeah, so let's uh, let's back up a bit. So, tell us a little bit about your upbringing. I know you were uh, you were raised in the South Bronx, so uh, tell us a bit. Was it difficult? Was I mean, was it was, was it a tough time in that area that you grew up in? Well, if it was, I wasn't aware of it because my parents were very protective, and um, uh, we lived on Webster Avenue. And uh, uh, by my mother's plan, we lived right across the street from the Catholic school that I attend, that my brother and I attended. Mm -hmm. So all we had to do was, uh, she, she got us into the projects right next to the church. Ah, okay. And all we had to do was walk down and cross the street and you know, neighbors and uh, uh, people in the neighborhood looked out after us. So I, I, there was no, I don't, I don't, I wasn't aware of violence or gang uh, mm -hmm. activity. I was in Catholic school, mm -hmm. but I remember my father being nervous about us staying in the Bronx. I gotcha. Now you're of a uh, Cuban and a Puerto Rican descent, correct? Yeah. Okay. And so then he moved us. Uh, I was 13. We moved to South Florida. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. now did, uh, but yeah, you, you can't take. <laughs> I, I hear you. So, <laughs> so did young Sandra, were you always a young a performer where you're intro an extrovert or very introverted? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I was extremely shy. Um, you know, and that, that, that's partly because of, of Catholic upbringing and mm -hmm. Catholic school thing. You know, we were, we were taught to just sit and keep quiet yeah. <laughs> and not express <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. Um, but, you know, 
there was something, uh, you know, bubbling inside of me because that's when I, I'll never forget the first time I, I thought maybe I should be a singer. This, the, the, the Catholic school had a basement and they would perform little parts or, you know, things in there, you know, as kids do. They Yeah. Do. And this one girl got up and sang Maria from West Side Story. And I remember hearing that song thinking, uh, first of all, I want to sing that song or I want to sing. Second of all, it was the most beautiful song ever that I'd ever heard. And so that's, but I didn't start really acting until I got to the University of Miami. Okay, and you were there for psychology, which was 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 my major as well. So I, I, really? when I was researching. I was like, okay, we have something in common there. So, uh, so uh, why? True. So while you were studying psychology there, it, did you did you start doing plays at that point? Well, what happened was uh, this fella uh, came up to me. I was on I was on the campus, and he asked me to be in a play that he was directing he was a directing student mm -hmm. and it was called the pupil by eugene ionescu which probably nobody's ever you know he's very uh uh abstract writer and 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 i didn't know who that was i mm -hmm. never even done a play and so I said, why are you asking me this? And he says, because you're perfect for the pupil. I want, you know, and I guess he saw my naivete. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it is definitely the charm of a live show. <laughs> and we actually love it. So That's amazing. Oh, no. Then, amazing. It, 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 it shows Sorry. that you're human and you have a love for animals. So that is, and, and I love animals as well. So that's I, amazing. Uh, she said, she, anyway, <laughs> to the bedroom. So, um, where was I? Yeah, um, you were just talking about the play, uh, the play oh, in Miami. Yeah, so, yes. So I went home. I asked my father, and he said, "Try it, Sandy. Try it." Because my father was sort of a he he was very funny. He was always making people laugh and entertaining. And I think he was a kind of a, a closet performer. And so he, he encouraged me. So I did it. And then all the professors encouraged me to do more acting and to be in the plays. And next thing I know, I'm trying to do all my studying in the psychology department. And doing plays late at night, like going home at midnight after a, a production. And so finally, I had to give up the psychology. And mm -hmm. I caught that bug, you know, that acting bug. So, so, so a, a Catholic school girl to the world of entertainment. So, so how quickly did you? <laughs> my mother was none too happy. <laughs> <laughs> so how quickly? Because I saw some amazing, like, like modeling photography that you did, uh, like in that time frame, and with different photographers, and then, and then to to the the audition and the whole the whole rigmarole of acting and that whole thing. Like for an introvert, that has to be stressful. So how, how did you, we'll move forward. How did you come about like the, the first audition? Well, not the first audition, but how did you come about uh, one of one of my all time favorite films, like auditioning for Beach Street, which is again. Well, uh, by the time I got to Beach Street, I'd already done a feature film, mm -hmm. a very small part. Yeah. Uh, I was studying, I went on to study at Southern Methodist University and they had a very good program there, mm -hmm. excellent program. And uh, I, I like to make money, and, and so I took a job. I was waitressing. I was, I was modeling. Mm -hmm. Mary Kay. I was a Mary Kay model <laughs> there. And <laughs> um, and then my agent in Dallas said, you know, there's this very interesting role, Mariquita. Uh, it's a it's an indie film. 
It's being directed by Jeru um, oh God, I can't believe he produced Tiffany mm -hmm. records at Tiffany's. Yeah. What is it's, it's, it's eluding me as well, but uh, it's okay. Well, he was a produ he produced many films, mm -hmm. and he was producing this film as I think more of like a favor to the to the woman who who was financing it, who was very mm -hmm. wealthy, Ruth Sharp. Mm -hmm. um, I think she just passed away, and Ruth Sharp had a daughter, and they bought the rights to do. The Awakening of Edna. And so this this is the film that I got. I, I went to meet with Martin Giroux. Martin Giroux. That's mm -hmm. his name. I went to meet with him. Uh, I had lots of hair and I was very young. And, and I he gave me the part right there. And I got my SAC card. Mm, okay. In 1981. Oh, okay. From wow. this job. Mm. Wow. And there were many, many great actors in it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wish I could remember them all. A couple of them have died. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful uh, character actors from, from, from New York. David Marshall Grant. Have you, do you know who David Marshall Grant yes. is? Yes. Yes, I do. Um. Kathleen Widows was in it. Oh, we had so many great, oh, wow. so many great, great actors in it. The only, the star, the mother, the the daughter, mm -hmm. of the mother, she was weak and just mm -hmm. didn't come out <laughs> as, well as it should have. But it was, real talk, real talk. I love it. I love it. It was a really great story. Yeah, and I played this uh, 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 Creole, and I had to speak a little Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, so from there, from SMU, I did these this audition at Juilliard for all the casting directors and uh, um, agents, all in New York. And you know, at that time, a lot of New York agencies were in LA too. Mm -hmm. So um, I I presented myself very very well. I I did. I had to do a, a combination of three minutes, and I guess I wowed them. And I was being, you know, uh, uh, sought out. I mean, all the agents wanted to sign me. I I eventually went with a smaller agent, Mary Sames, because she was. Like she was like another mother figure with me, and and, and then I moved on to ICM. Mm -hmm. But uh, so basically, when I got to New York, I was sort of set up. Oh, um, okay. So by the time I got to Beat Street, I'd done all these plays yeah. in the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, then that first feature, and uh, they called me in. I met with Harry Belafonte and everybody involved. And, uh, and then that was it. I got that too. So, so 1984 was when that, that, that movie came out, which again right. was, was a uh, revolutionary to, again, to that, to the break, that culture at that time of break dancing was huge at that moment. Not so much as much, as much now, but, uh, but 1984, again, a huge, a huge, huge year for cinema and for television, uh, a groundbreaking series that yeah. was your next your, I, I need to say your your big break on on this show, Miami Vice. Now you were cast to play Gina uh, Calabrese. Now, now yeah. is now this this role. Walk us through like the process to not only be cast on this show, but speak a little bit more about. Uh, we spoke before uh, this when we were speaking uh, prior to the show about how how great. Yes, please. Yes. Time out for a minute. Yes. Yes. You know it's wine time for me. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. You know, I know. Amazing. <laughs> Live television, Joe. Amazing. <laughs> that, that's why I always bring the big cup 
to the yeah. set. <laughs> See, I have to I have to start doing better than just than just the water bottle because uh, I got to start uh, start start getting. I got to get one with the Eagles on it since you're representing your Giants. So uh, always oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Oh no! Don't worry about no it. No like problem said, at all. We're going into to territory. That just want to say hello to CJ, Steve, uh, TK for watching. Uh, uh, C CJ and Steve are two of our hosts on Indie Escape Network, uh, and TK has uh, the Black Filmmakers Lounge on Saturday mornings. So yeah, uh, yes, definitely a cult classic. So yes, yeah, Sandra. So Gina Calabrese, Miami Vice. What I was saying to you prior to uh, to coming live is that. It was groundbreaking for me, as I'm sure it was to millions, because this was a first where you saw four of the five leads on this show as people of color. Edward James, almost Olivia Brown, Philip Michael Thomas and yourself. So to speak on, like, did you realize at that time what what type of impact this show had? And did you realize that you were playing such a strong role that would be decades later would be inspirational to so many young women and, and just people watching? I had no idea what to expect. I know that when I was working on Beat Street, actually doing shoot, doing the shooting, uh, a couple of the guys came up to me and they said, "Man, we read this part. You're perfect for it, man. You got you got to get called in for this." And and you know, at that time, I just trusted my agent, and sure enough, I got I get a call, and uh, I went to read for Michael Mann. Um, our director, um, who was now I'm getting confused with Beach Street and Miami Vice. What do we do? Uh, yeah, uh, what who directed uh, the Miami Vice pilot? What's Michael uh, Mann? Michael Mann, no, no, no. Thomas hey, Carter. Oh, Thomas yes, Carter. yes, yes, great director. So, yeah, I read for Michael Mann, Thomas Carter, and Bonnie Timmerman in an office and you know at you know she was she was italian she wasn't mm -hmm. latina mm -hmm. but i'll tell you what happened halfway through the series and so um next thing i know they want to test you so next thing i know i'm flying out to la and uh i'd only been to la once I wasn't too familiar with it. And they put me up at that universal building, you know, the big black mm -hmm. building. At, yep. uh, you, and uh, I did the test, you know, it's very intimidating. I, you know, uh, I read with the guy from Chips. <laughs> Which one, uh, Eric Estrada or, no, no. or the other? The other, okay. Um, what's his name? Um, sweet guy, very sweet. He was... He was reading for the role of Top, I mean Crockett. Oh, okay. The other gentleman. Yeah, his name's eluding me. But I know you mean I know you mean. And so yeah. we we were put together and I go in and I do a good job, I guess. I you know, I kind of flubbed up a couple of lines and I cursed. And I was very mad at myself. I cursed, but I kept going because as an as a theater actor, you just you learn how to do that. You keep going. Yeah. You don't yeah. stop and go. Oh, can I do that over? You can't yeah. Do that. yeah, that's a no no. Yes. So I just kept going, and I guess they loved it. They laughed. They loved it. And then that night, Thomas Carter called me and told me I got the part. And then he told me, "Why don't you hang around for a week or so? They'll, you know, we'll we'll fit the bill and all that." And I was so freaked out. I had no friends in LA. So I said, no, I want to go home. All I wanted to do was go back home to New York <laughs> instead of hanging out and partying with whoever. You know, I just wanted to go home. But, uh, and then they never, I, they, it took forever to find Don Johnson. You know, he wanted it badly. He was almost begging for it, you know. <laughs> this this was his last hurrah at his age, you know, at that age that he could. Uh, what do you call it? Um, I, I I'm 
not finding words today so easily, but, but, okay. So, so, so it took a moment to, to cast. So, so once everyone was cast, so are you, do you, do you then take, uh, take up residence in Miami, back in Miami for the show? Okay. Yeah. And I, I was so naive about the whole project. Get this. When my agent told me I got the part and she got some good money from me, you know, I was the first one cast. Oh, did not know that. Okay. Be except for John Deal and Michael Talbot. Yes. We were yes. cast out of New York. I mean, L.A. Mm -hmm. I was cast out of New York. The only one cast out of New York. And they were auditioning everyone, you know, for the two leads. And so I just kept saying, well, who? And, and finally, I had a... Um, Jody, the the uh, girl who did our the the costumer, mm -hmm. took me out shopping, and I said, "Well, have they found the lead yet? You know, that's a pretty big part, you know." And he said, "Oh yeah, I can't believe you don't know this. It's Don Johnson." I said, "Who's Don Johnson?" Yeah, I didn't know who he was. Well, you should know who he was because he was married to Melanie. With it. Oh, okay. And, so that was that time. Okay. And I knew Melanie because she was married to my University of Miami uh, um, uh, mate, Stephen Bauer, who was then Rocky Echavaria, mm. was going by Rocky Echavaria, not mm. Stephen Bauer. Okay. Stephen and I did a bunch of plays together, and uh, Ray Liotta was there. Fantastic actor, we, yes. Three, three, we were all in the same mm -hmm. year, in the three years. And, and then Rocky, he took off to L.A., and then he became Stephen Bauer. <laughs> Stephen Bauer, yes. And, Scarface and everything, yeah. And so he met Melanie, he met, and they got married. And so I don't, you know, I'd run into Rocky in New York with Melanie at times. So, so I thought, wow, what a, you know, six degrees of separation uh, with 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 Melanie and actually I know all of Melanie's husbands. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I worked with Don. I work with Rocky, and I work with Antonio Banderas. Oh, yes, yeah, right, yes, yes, yes. On, on Broadway. Yes. So, how was the how was the camaraderie on 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 Vice from the beginning? Was it was it was it close knit in the beginning all the way through, or did it have time to need time to grow, or or how did how was that for you? Well, first of all, we didn't know each other, so we had to get to know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that wasn't so bad at all. You know, it's great to work. And, you know, we all appreciate it. And, and we were being wined and dined by everybody in Miami. You know, uh, we were the only show uh, yeah. filming in Miami. And Miami was a dump back then, Miami Beach particularly. But they, you know, the crew would go and paint the facades pink and yellow and all these beautiful colors. And all of a sudden we were shooting in this incredible uh, scenery. Um, we, we, we all got along, you know, uh, you know, Don was difficult because he wanted to be, uh, uh, he, he was a diva from the get go, you know, and, and, and the fact was that, we really didn't know who Don was, you know. I mean, he, he hadn't had a a big career yet. And we didn't know who Philip was. Although although Philip did a lot of New York stuff, he did he did uh, a cup a, a movie, a musical movie with Irene mm -hmm. Cara. Yeah, you that's know? right, yeah. So, you know, it, it had we had our ups and downs, but for the most part, we all got along. The, all, the, the only person who caused problems was Don. 
<laughs> so you, you, you and Olivia Brown, like as, as Trudy and Gina, uh, there was great, great chemistry on screen between the two of you. Did you enjoy that, that screen, that screen time with her playing yeah, those roles? Those, all those, yeah. Uh, yeah. All, yeah. Because you I guys were. Every uh, second. Okay, so that was my question because you, you were involved in like heavy storylines as the show went on, but you had to fight for those to get those the screen time. Oh my God. We you know, we'd get the scripts and you'd read through it and you go, Where where are we? You know, and I remember going into Michael was Michael Mann was visiting the set and he was in his office and I remember reading the script and I think I had maybe two lines or something and and not nothing integral to the story or the plot. And I, I threw the script up against the wall and I said, what, why am I here? Why am I getting paid so much money? Why did you give me so much money just to be doing, you know, two or three lines? Why aren't you using me? Anyway, it was a battle. That was a big battle. Well, that's amazing, though, that you fought for, because, again, as you can tell as you watch the series from the beginning, that definitely those characters became a more integral part to the story as it went on. I mean, at least more storylines were created around them as opposed to earlier on. So it should have been more. Mm. But, it, you know, Don took over. Mm. Don became the star of this of the yeah. series. In fact, it was really sad what happened to Philip. You know, he, he, he Philip was always, you know, getting the. I mean, I think Philip could have done much better. Yeah, uh, Philip was immensely talented. I, I always yeah. thought that he should have been a movie star. He should have went on and done a lot more. Unfortunately, yeah. so I never understood why. Because again, it wasn't a social media time when you knew what celebrities were doing after shows. So, right. But right. Yeah, well, but, he, uh, he just he should, they should have given him more airtime to more substantial storylines. Mm. But it all went to to Don, and uh, that was frustrating. And even, you know, when the, one of our guys, uh, John Deal, he yeah. was so upset that he begged Michael Mann to write him out. Mm. Wow. And he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and the we, were, we thought he was nutty to do that, you know. Yeah. But he, was, he wasn't being used. Yeah. So... Yeah. I understand. And, yeah, as an actor, you want to be used, just like you said. If you're just there to be window dressing, then then why are you there to getting paid money to not do what you love to do? So it's yeah. understandable. So so you've you've had the opportunity to do a lot of amazing work, uh, and not just television on stage. Tell us what stage means to you, because uh, obviously it's it's very early on you started, but you've you've gone from the University of Miami all the way to Broadway, yeah. off Broadway. So Southern tell us a little Methodist. bit about that. Yes, absolutely. Southern U Methodist. University of Miami to Southern Methodist U yep. University. Made my way to New York and got my first Broadway play uh, within two years of living in New York. That's when I got kind of hot, and that's when Beat Street came along. And mm -hmm. advice. I starred opposite Tony Lobianco in a very, very uh, incredible play called A View from the Bridge, written by Arthur Miller. It's an incredible play, and it's been done many, many times since on Broadway. And I was the uh, ingenue in it. And it was very, very heavy duty, emotional role. And I got very good write-ups. And I mean, I got the best reviews of my, my life uh, during that time. And so those reviews and those write-ups got around and that's people started seeing me. So theater is my first love. Oh, okay. And so I was going to ask you because uh, like a lot of uh, actors that I know just say they feel so much more alive on stage than the small uh, camera stuff or whatever. So don't, don't get me wrong. I love filming. I love it. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's, you have, you're in more control on, in the theater, it, uh, in, in, on the stage, you know, uh, 
you have to be on top of it. I mean, you, you yeah. can't fake yeah. doing theater. You can't, like I say, you can't stop and say, oh, I need to do that over again. <laughs> yeah, there's no cuts. <laughs> and um, that was where I learned. I mean, I was thrown on the stage at the University of Miami. They basically threw me into huge parts, uh, you know, even Shakespeare. And I learned how to act on the stage, but also with very good teachers. I had very, very good teachers. Amazing. And so the, the uh, getting, doing film for the first time kind of came easy for me because mm. I was told just to take everything down a notch. Yeah. And I also love movies. I watched a ton of movies my whole life in my lifetime and i could see the when an actor all all you need is the actor thinking something and you can yes. capture that on film absolutely absolutely you know on stage you have to really yeah you got to remote yes yes absolutely but on film it's all in the you know here Absolutely. C.J. Robles just said, uh, theater is real. It's hard to fake it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my God. You can't. <laughs> no, everyone will see it. So what are some of your uh, what, favorite favorite films in, uh, that inspired you? Well, I'm so old-fashioned. Uh, I love, uh, um, like, Italian films. You know, I've got the Criterion Station now, this – the, the channel and I'm watching all these old films again, you know, Fellini and, and uh, I, my favorite actress of all time, probably nobody knows who she is anymore. Anna Magnani, who is Anna. Yeah. She's very, very famous and she won an Oscar and she was ex very Italian Mm -hmm. And she played these incredible parts, and I love the, I love that kind of, those parts for that she played. You know, she played mm -hmm. a prostitute who was a mother who gave up prostitution to take care of her son. It's called Mama Roma. That's one of my favorite films. Mm -hmm. Mama Roma, um, a West Side Story is one of my favorite films. Um, um, uh, I always say when a film comes out, well, it's no, uh, um, it's no West Side Story, or you know, <laughs> or um, Lawrence of Arabia. I go, well, it's no Lawrence of Arabia, um, which is an incredible film. Absolutely, they don't make cinema like that anymore. Absolutely um, not. You know, Godfather, of course. Oh, um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So you were able to, uh, in your career uh, early on, you were able to work with one of the the absolute greats, uh, inspiration to myself and gosh, probably millions and millions of others in Sidney Poitier. So uh, can you just speak a little bit about working with uh, that gentleman that we lost? I recently? was extremely fortunate to work with Sidney Poitier. Extreme. I mean, uh, I had literally days before signed divorce papers for my first husband. Mm. Very painful process. Uh, most people would agree with that, getting divorced. And, um, but I got this part and I had to fly to Chicago and do this teacher, play this teacher who's enamored with, you know, sir. <laughs> and, uh, and I was skinny as a rail. I must have looked pathetic. I mean, I was so sad. And Peter Bogdanovich directed it, which yeah. was also like, wow. Yeah. Not only Sidney Poitier, but Peter Bogdanovich. Yeah. Another, another legend we lost recently, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I get there, and we have, you know, as you know, you sit on, on film sets for hours. And yeah. he sat there and talked to me. He, he, I guess I told him I had just gotten divorced and he was so amazing. He was so sweet and so comforting. And he told me all about his life from when he started in Jamaica, you know, came to New York and 
told me about all his his uh, strife with you know being a black man and and marrying a blonde blue-eyed woman yeah and um his children every it was he was so intimate with me you know telling me these really beautiful stories and he gave me kind of a hope a sense of yeah i i de- you know i just got divorced but look at me i'm here with this great man yeah. this other great director and i'm thriving so i i moved on and and if anything he was healing yeah. at that moment that's amazing to hear. Great, great story. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So uh, soap operas have been a huge part of your journey as well. So uh, <laughs> Not really. I mean, I well, never do soap operas. But then... It's amazing, though, because I've spoken to a couple people since, since I met you last year at that con, and they have talked about the Carmen role and you play in the crime boss and how much of a, how how evil you were. And I just wanted to ask you how, cause I know every, most actors love to play the villain because it's such a, it's such, it's usually different than their personalities. Did you, did you enjoy playing that, that Carmen Santos role in on that soap opera or was it, was it difficult because it's a soap opera and the, the, the filming is kind of crazy with multiple episodes and all of that. So just tell us a little bit about that. I, when I, I didn't have, I, first of all, I didn't have to audition. I went, had a meeting with the producer and, and next thing I know, I'm on the set. <laughs> trying to remember tw- 20 pages of dialogue. Yeah. And I didn't know where this character was going, but mm-hmm. he did tell me she was kind of like a mob boss. Yeah. I thought that was cool to play mob boss. You know, I thought it was great. I thought it was a great idea. And um, and I love playing parts that are yeah. very different from me. I can do that. So I got into it. It, be, it became a little, you know, it's, it's very repetitive. Soap operas are very repetitive. Yeah. You know, one week you're doing this one scene, and then the next week you find yourself doing the scene all over again in different, in a different, yeah. Write it differently because they have to remind the people what happened last week. <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah. it, that was very annoying. And then they didn't know what to do with it. Mm, My character, mm. because she became so out of order. They they had me try to they I you know tried to kill my son. Actually, I did shoot my son. Oh wow. And, <laughs> <laughs> and kill his girlfriend and so then the, the character became too evil and then what ah. to do like in daytime you can't have too evil a character because then people get turned off yeah yeah not it's different like with the godfather i mean how evil are those characters but they're they're yeah. beloved exactly. so everybody gets you know but on daytime it's a no no, you know. Mm. Well, you were nominated for I saw like a favorite villain or by the daytime <laughs> Emmy, so it was like I well, didn't actually see good. but I played a villain very good. I, I did enjoy that. I just <laughs> I just didn't enjoy the repetitiveness yes. of it. And right. and learning thirty pages. Oh, I can I can imagine that's I've heard it from friends that do it, and it's it's uh it's taxing to say the least. So oh, my brain. <laughs> my oh my god! Night, I come home, and I, I you know, and I could only have one glass of wine because I couldn't function the next day. But I'd have my one glass of wine, and I'd be learning these lines, and my husband could hear me cursing. Oh and, wow! And because <laughs> I needed, I was, I already said this. <laughs> and, you know, oh, man. And so I enjoyed it, and That's... you know, it, it was a very nice gig. I I got to stay in New York, and actually, I was trying to have a baby. Uh, this is sad. This is very sad. I took the gig because uh, I was getting paid a lot of money, and I wanted to have a child, and and I knew that was the only way I could do that. 
Suffice to say, I never had the kid. It never worked out. I don't want to go into that chapter of my life, but it was uh, very sad. But we'll move on. Okay. Absolutely. Mr. Ridgely, did you have a question? I, I did, but I didn't want to interrupt no, uh, right then and there. Uh, I'm curious, though. Uh, you brought up West Side Story. Have you seen the remake by Spielberg? And if you have, what is your Three opinion? Three times. Okay. What's your opinion, please? I think it's another kind of, uh, um, what's the word? To, it's a stellar production. It's, it's an, you know, it's another iconic movie because of how he did change it a little bit here and there. Uh, for me, the performances are so wonderful and the fact that they're doing all their own singing, and of course they're doing their, their movement and dancing, but I just, first of all, I love Steven Spielberg. I think he's a great filmmaker, one of the greatest of all times. And you know, some people, when, when they first came out with the idea, they were all upset, like, uh, why why mess with, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, uh, a classic, yeah. A class. Why, why mess with a classic? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there are dozens of, of musicals that they do every, you know, uh, revive all the time. Mm -hmm. And in opera, they do the same classical, you mm -hmm. know, Norma, uh, Don Giovanni. They do it all the time. They redo it all the time with different yeah. people. So yeah, they, made, they made Evita with Madonna. So, <laughs> so. Yeah. I, really along. <laughs> I, mean, I actually think Lady Gaga would be amazing as mm -hmm. maybe of her own. I agree. I agree. She I could agree. sing. She can sing it. Well, and she has the um, she has the acting chops. Yeah. She and, has and the great screen presence. Yes, she has a great presence, yeah. and 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 just some people command the screen, and you just you saw it at *A Star Is Born* that she's she's much more than just a singer and a no. performer. So she would have been a great Evita. Anyway, um, absolutely. So, oh. so, so you play twins, Jeannie. Say, okay, go ahead, please. I, say, I love *West Side Story*. I think it's another classic, and. I don't care what other people say, and uh, I, I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> awesome, awesome! Did you love it, Joe? Of course, I did. <laughs> <laughs> if I said differently, my wife would kill what me. I just said, <laughs> you didn't like it. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, so you played twins, Jeannie and Joan, on uh, the Smash HBO hit The Sopranos. Uh, how was this? How did this experience come to you, and how was it? Uh, Again, being on one of these amazing, like world worldwide phenomenon shows, uh, coming into it while well, it was going. I came to that right from the early beginning of yeah. Sopranos. Mm -hmm. I met with David Chase in a little room on Seventy Second Street uh, to read for the um, uh, Doctor Cusimano. I mean. Oh. Dr. Oh, wow. The no. Lorraine Bracco character? Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Um, Me Melfi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I read Melfi. He liked me. He brought me back. No, he sent me away. He says, take a look at um, Carmela. And mm -hmm. I remember reading it, and I think, no, I'm not right for Carmela. I mean, because I had just, you know, I could be aggressive. Like you know, the part in 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 um, Guiding Light, the mm -hmm. mob boss. But yeah, I I instinctually didn't feel right for Carmel. I oh. felt perfect for Dr. Melfi. Mm -hmm. Having studied psychology, uh, you know, I kind of I felt good about. I thought yeah. well, this is the most perfect part I could ever ever do. Yeah, and so he kept bringing me back. Ultimately, I tested for Dr. Malfi. I went to LA 
and with all the guys. Christopher was there. Christopher, you know, and, and James, James the was there. They were all testing. Mm -hmm. And um then my agent called me and told me they had made Lorraine Bracco an offer. Mm. And um, and you know, I later read that she he wanted her to play Carmela, but she didn't want to do another role like that because it was too much like Goodfellas. Oh, okay. So, mm. so then I I was I yeah I can't I can't even tell you how depressed I got mm. not getting that part. So I let that go, you know, had to move on. And then I get a call. Uh, David Chase wrote this character, and would you do it? And I almost said no because I was like, "Fuck him!" <laughs> <laughs> Real no. talk. Well, yeah, I was like, "Fuck, fuck these people!" And send me, you know, they put me through all these changes, and but then I thought I really want to be a part of it because I just thought it was a brilliant pilot hmm. and a brilliant show. Absolutely. And that's how I got to, you know, and then he wrote the twins story. <laughs> it was really fun. So much fun. So, you know, I guess he was throwing me <laughs> crumbs. <laughs> uh, you know, he likes me. I mean, I know he liked yeah. me. And I know that he thought of me as a, a very good actor, but, you know. Politics and you know. politics, 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 and the next one that I just wanted to speak briefly about because I thought it deserved a better run. Uh, the show Gang Related, which uh, oh. again I thought was uh, I thought it was a fantastic show. I wanted to see I so much know. more, and uh, again, it just uh, it got the plug pulled. So, what direction to take it in? Oh, okay. I think they were very confused. Mm. Uh. I really don't understand what happened there, but they just didn't know which direction to go with it. Beyond. Okay. Can I tell a Steven Spielberg film uh, a story though? Please do, please. Speaking of West Side Story. Yes. yes. Back in we're going back to Miami Vice days when 1986, uh, we're in we're on a holiday in the summer, and I auditioned for a movie called Batteries Not Included. I remember that, yes. It wasn't directed by Spielberg, but it was produced by mm -hmm. Spielberg. And Matt, a director named Matthew, I forget his last name, but mm -hmm. he was the director. They brought me in. They, I read with five actors, and you're not going to believe the actors I read with. I read with Dennis Buchikiris, who ended up getting the part. I read with Christopher Noth, mm. who didn't get the part. I read with um, uh, uh, um, DJ, Mo D DJ Moffat, who's oh. a big actor in LA. Yeah. D something Moffat. Yeah. And um, who else did I read with? Okay, those three guys. Mm -hmm. I got the part of the girl in that who was ultimately played by Elizabeth Pena, who I really respect as an I actor. love Rest in Peace, an amazing actress. Uh, Matthew Robbins, he, uh, they said, yes, on the chat. Matthew Robbins. Yes, uh, who yeah. said that? Uh, I believe Joe. <laughs> Joe Would yeah. you, oh, thank you, Joe. Yes. <laughs> so... so uh, I get the role. I'm in fittings and everything for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking they're going to let me go very naively. Like, okay, I got this movie and it's starting to shoot early uh, in September in, in New York, down in the East Village. And Michael Mann did not let me do the movie. Oh. Even though he got three phone calls from Spielberg himself. Because wow. Michael told me once, he said, you know, he keeps calling, wanting you for this part that he thinks you're, you know, perfect for. 
Wow. And I said, why don't you let me out? Come on, just let me out. I, I'll, I'll leave the show. I'll leave the show if I have to. He says, you're not going to leave the show. First of all, I have to write out John Deal, which that was true. And I'm not going to write you out, too, at this, in the same year. Wow. And, and then I remember Don Johnson coming up to me saying, well, you know, oh, you know, he's, eh, you know, I tried to help you out, you know. I called Michael and yeah, you know, I tried to, to, you know, and I kept thinking, did you really, did you really try to help me out, or did you interfere? And my, and this is my conspiracy, okay, is that I was the first one to get a movie. Oh, mm. right. Ah, makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not just a movie, but it was Steven Spielberg. Yes. You were on the fast track more than Don. Yes. And anyway, long story short. Wow. I wasn't I wasn't let out of my contract. I wasn't let go to do the film. I said, I'm sorry, I can't make I can't make it happen. Wow. And another time, these are the, these are the perils. Of, of doing a big fans, you know, a big time show. Mm -hmm. And it just shouldn't be, I mean, listen, I should be grateful for having the work I had, but I got a call that uh, Scorsese wanted to see me for The Color of Money. Mm, Tom Cruise, Paul Newman, yes, yes. For the character. Yes. Yes. They wouldn't let me out for the week. <sighs> to come to New York to meet with Scorsese. Wow. wow. So these, you know. Wow. I don't know where we go from there, but I thought those were interesting stories. Those are amazing stories. Thank you so much for sharing, because that's what, what we always say. We want real talk, and we love that you're being so open and honest, so I thank you for that, because, again, most of our guests have, have done that, and that's what our audience wants to hear. We don't want to hear the same Oh, everybody was great, and because we know the perils of the business, both of us. You've been in it a, a long time, and I've been in it for for a minute. And it's there is hard times, there's struggles, there's there's messed up stories, like you just said. Like as that's far as mess, that's that that it's I, very I'm so upset because you could have easily. I mean, they could have easily switched things around, and I don't know if your story did your storylines end up getting thicker on the show since they weren't letting you do well, these movie roles or? This is, you know, he tried, I guess. He wrote the Heroes of the Revolution uh, episode. Yeah. Where I got to sing. sing yeah, yeah, amazing episode. Only because he, he, he happened to watch the 1986 uh, um, series, uh, you know, the baseball series, and he just happened to be watching by the time that happened, I, I said to my um, publicist, I said, we must never tell them what's, go what's going on with me. If I'm flying here or that, we must never say anything because I don't trust anybody. Mm. So if it's, if it's Thursday and I'm not working on Friday and don't tell them that I'm flying somewhere and I may not, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I have to keep everything on the on the lowdown. Yeah, yeah, because you and never knew who was gonna go behind your back and yeah. sabotage. <laughs> that, and so that's what happened with the series. I didn't. I said, "Don't tell them that I'm singing the national anthem yeah. at the Third World Series." Yeah, which you know, it's a really big deal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I did. I hit it. I hit it. And so he's watching the game. And he, he said, and then all of a sudden they announce your name. I'm thinking, <laughs> what the hell? Can't she sing? Like he thought I was going to embarrass the show. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> That's just... I sang the hell out of the song. And next day I got roses and roses and roses from everybody. And then he said, I'm going to write an episode where you sing. I went, yeah, all right, okay. 
Amazing. Amazing. Uh, well, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Does anybody remember Heartbeat? <laughs> not, not, not too much. It, it's it's seared in my my yeah. my brainstem, but uh, <laughs> not too much. No. Okay, so here's the other thing. I'm the one with the real singing voice, and and Philip too. Philip has a great voice. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I don't know. And I I made a lot of stupid mistakes. I was offered a, a record contract, mm -hmm. and my lawyer. He didn't think it was fair, so he nixed it. Because, mm. and because I still was a little shy, I wasn't aggressive enough to got to like go to Criterion Studio and and do my own C album. I should have done that, my own yeah. album. I should have put all my money into that mm -hmm. and released my own album. Which, but shoulda, coulda, woulda, but you know, you know. Just, yeah, you, you, you know, you could sing. You did on you, you have on stage, and you have in many other ways. So, so right. So, so yeah, so it's game time. Uh, I call this one sentence of silence. Uh, this basically, I mentioned it to you before. I say a name of someone you've worked with. Uh, and you either give me a line or two about them, good or bad, okay. or you stay silent, which means they suck. So. No, so, that doesn't mean that they suck. It's too complicated to go into. There you go. There you go. Okay, we're going to start off with Kevin Bacon. Love him. Awesome. Absolutely love him. Al Pacino. Love him. I, I, I adore Al. I actually, I, he's not just one of the greatest actors of all time, but he's a very funny guy. And a lot of people probably don't know that. It's pretty funny. There you go. Paula Garces. Oh, my baby. No. Yeah, <laughs> my baby. Fantastic actress. More people need to know. Yeah. All right. An actor that you work with early in his career, Liam Neeson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story there. <laughs> well, Liam and I dated, so. Didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was going to go silent. I, I was, <laughs> <laughs> it was a great storyline on the show, but I, I didn't know. No, that I, I, we, we hooked up when he was on the show, and I, I actually went to visit him in London, and. Um, no, I, I love Liam. He's he's a, another very good actor. Uh, it did work out between us, obviously, <laughs> you know. But but I had fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter Bogdanovich, who you spoke of briefly earlier. Brilliant, brilliant, funny. Uh, let's talk about storyteller. Oh my God. Between Sidney Poitier telling me about his life. And and Peter telling me stories about Orson Welles and all these great people. I, I I mean, it was like a life lesson working on that film. Amazing. Jay Hernandez. Oh, sweetheart. Jay's just the sweetest guy. So sweet. A very good actor. Absolutely. One of my favorite actresses, Sonia yeah. Braga. Sonia Braga. <laughs> We had a great time together. I played her sister. Mm -hmm. Sonia's funny. She's she lives in New York, by the way. I run, I see her once in a blue moon. Absolutely. Uh, okay, uh, controversial figure, of course, but uh, you work with him early in your career, Bill Cosby. That's a tough one. Uh, I figured. But that show was earlier in your career, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to gloss no, 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 over it. You know, I'm more than willing to answer. Um, I was so happy when I got the gig to work with him because he was an icon, and we used to listen to his albums all the time. You know, his comic, his comedy albums, and. Then when I started to work with him, I saw a different side to him. And that's not just because of what came out. Mm -hmm. I 
he's kind of creepy. Creepy. Like, you would say things like, you're going to meet me at this restaurant downtown. And, and I thought he was sure joking because hmm. I wasn't going to meet him and I wasn't going to, you know, hang out with him. He's, met, you know, I went to his house. I saw all his beautiful artwork, you know. Um, I didn't like the way he treated this young boy on the set who played my son. He, he admonished this kid and I kept thinking, this is so bizarre. Here's the guy who did this famous show with all these kids who's supposed to be, and he told me, he, I'll never forget what he, and this is the truth. I'm not making this up. The kid couldn't get the lines out. You know, he's having problems. He's like eight mm -hmm. years old. Yeah. And, and he said, what are you, a dummy? Mm. But in a very mean way, not in a, mm. like a funny, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's my, not my opinion of him, but my experience with him. And all I can say is I, I'm glad I got out. I mean, I'm glad I wasn't mm. a, a victim. <laughs> you know? Wow. wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Just that expression on Joe's face speaks at all. Wow. Wow. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, another, this, this actor I think is, is fantastic. He's, he's little known, but uh, well, I mean, not little known, but, but he should be no, known more. Uh, you were in uh, the, you were in the house that Jack built with it. EJ Benia. EJ. EJ yeah. should be a star. Yes, absolutely. At this very moment. He should have either his own show or he should have moved on to another movie. EJ has the charisma on this kid's face. He's not a kid anymore, but yeah, yeah. Still a young man, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. He's he's fantastic. Yeah. In my opinion, he should be a star. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. That he's amazing in that film and everything I've seen him in, he just he's just dynamic on screen. Great screen. Great screen. Great and screen presence, yeah. He's got the career. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, and finally, one of my one of my all time favorite actors that I've had the pl pleasure to meet, just like yourself, Edward James Olmos. Edward's great. Eddie. Yeah. Eddie's great. You know, he could also be a pain in the neck because <laughs> no, only because. He hated working with Don. Oh, wow. And so there was always tension on the set between mm. him and Don. But, no, Eddie was, you know, Eddie's a, an actor's actor. I mean, he's... Absolutely. Absolutely. He's I mean, awesome. American me, just uh, his body of work, it speaks for itself. Absolutely. He, the, the, we had a lot of scenes together, and he would always give him, you know... Like he never he never phoned it in. He just was right there. Eddie's always present. And that's one and of the best things you can say about an actor, always present. Absolutely. Always present and always willing to try different things. Like we got bored doing the same stuff on my yeah. device. And you know, we tried to mix it up. Absolutely. But we had we were limited because of the the writing or you know the way yeah. the, the way it was set up you know yeah yeah that yeah it's a machine how many days and everything so but so, he was uh, only difficult because of Don because you know when you set up a scene and especially like in the the office you know the office of Miami Vice right but. Well, Don would place himself on uh, it, it, alone. He mm -hmm. would never place himself with us. Oh, wow. Because that meant that he had to share the camera, the scene with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, mm. So he got his own shot. Gotcha. Yeah. So he had his single. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know what you mean. Yeah. So, 
And sometimes we wanted to be in a group and just be to, you know, that yeah. way. Because yeah. we we're all working together. Mm -hmm. And then they had to set him up and then he would take forever to come out of his trailer. And, you know, we'd be waiting for his take because his take would be first, depending mm -hmm. on his schedule or be last. And it was. Wow. And wow. Eddie didn't appreciate that. Wow. All right. So thank you for uh, playing that with us. Uh, so, so one thing I want to ask you before, uh, before we wrap this up, you've been married for over two decades and, uh, and I can't believe it. What's uh what's what's the secret sauce? Like what you and Roger have been, like I said, over 20 years now. What's the for our audience out there that uh that might myself included that might just want some tips on what, what it takes to make a relationship have that longevity? What what's what keeps it uh what keeps keeps it going for, for you and Roger after this long? Especially both of you are entertainers, so well, he's, how does yeah, that he's work? A musician. Yeah. Yes. Roger's a musician and he's mm -hmm. a very he's a great musician. Not mm -hmm. just a musician. He's yeah. a musician. He just had a gig today. He worked on Mrs. Maisel. Oh, amazing. I can't say more than that because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be Great giving show. away. <laughs> Great show. Um, but he did a session. He had to put down on, on uh, you know, a song. And um, I think, you know, marriage is not for everybody. In fact, I didn't, never thought it was for me either, especially after the first divorce. I was like, I'll never marry again. But mm -hmm. Roger and I were friends first. We met on a show on Broadway called um, Chronicle of a Death Foretold. It was a musical version of a Gabriel Garcia Marquez piece, and I was the lead in it. He was the percussionist in it. Okay. And, 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 and funny enough, the director had called him in to audition for the man who plays my husband in mm. the production because she loved, she she loves Roger. She thought he was very handsome and maybe he could act because he, he actually studied acting. Anyway, he didn't get the part. <laughs> he got the part much He got later. the most important part and like marrying you. So there so, you go. Um, but, the, the after, you know, I, I ran into him and we've never been separated from, from the moment I ran into him. We hooked up. We, I think, I think you have to have patience with each other, especially if you're in the same business and you have to respect each other's, uh, you know, artistry and give them the, the room to do what they want. Like mm -hmm. I don't complain when he plays drums in the house <laughs> and he, well, he did complain when he had to do selfies with me, self tapes with me. <laughs> he's, he's complaining less. He had to, <laughs> you know, um, but we have to be supportive of each other and we love each other. We just love each other. And I don't know how you find someone that you, you can hook up with like that. I don't know. I think it's, I think there's someone for everyone out there. I, I really do. There's all, there's someone for everyone out there. And I think we, we, we even each other out. You nice. know, it's not always easy, We nice. fight, but he's, he's a good egg. Awesome. Awesome. A Roger's a good egg. That's a good way to end them. Roger's a good egg. So, and, so. <laughs> what else? Did I, he's a good egg. He's. All right. That's, yeah. He's a good egg. <laughs> so um, my, my last like industry question, if you could play any role, any budget range, like on film stage or television, what would it be? It's not written yet. Oh. Uh, Great answer. Great answer. Great. I like that. That has not been said yet. Wow. Okay. Well, listen, I have, I just finished two indie films. We didn't talk about that. Yeah. That was my, yeah, that was, that was actually my, my last question. What was next for you and everything? Yeah. I did this film called Rare, Rare Objects that was directed by Katie Holmes. Oh yes. I heard about that. Yale Productions. Yes. And, yes. and I play, a very interesting character in that. I'm hoping it really 
comes out and because I play a character that finally is is so good for me. It's not the lead, it's it's a lead in it. Yes. Uh, my my daughter is Julia um, uh, Mallorca. She okay. plays my daughter. And and then there's another film, Don Q, with um, you know, our man Armando Sante. Oh yes, yes. I played his sister. So I'm hoping they're films, you know, they were they were shot like filmatic, not like a TV thing. So I'm yeah. hoping. But um, the, the the great part for me has not been written yet, and it will be, and I hope to be alive and ready for it. <laughs> Awesome, 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 awesome. So, 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 uh, the the last uh, imparting question I always ask every guest: uh, just please give our audience some uh, words of wisdom. Like, there's a lot of actors, filmmakers, film professionals that watch, and just uh, whether whether uplifting or not, just some words to to leave leave the show with on the, this crazy industry that we're part of. Well, you have to be committed to this business, even through the hard times, through the ups and the downs. And I've gotten depressed myself over the downs, but I always pick myself up again because it's the, it's the only thing I love to do. And if you don't love it and you're not willing to sacrifice a lot for it, then don't do it. But if you love it so much, you have to stick with it and be prepared for any moment that someone's going to bring you an opportunity, whether it be you know, uh, singing, if you're a singer, be prepared. If you're an act, you know, be ready. Be ready. That's, That's amazing. Cool. Amazing, amazing wisdom hey, there. Brendan, cool. can you please hit the last two comments? Ah, uh, yes. Violet Mendoza. Oh, Violet is a, a, one of my best friends ever, and she's an amazing filmmaker. I uh, love how open Sandra is. She's a classic She's a classic and classy woman, oh. a beautiful actress, an inspirational interview. Thank I, you. I, I, I concur. Thank you, Violet. Thank you, Violet. I, I, I love concur. her name, Violet. <laughs> yeah, she is, she is an amazing soul. Thank you for watching, Violet. I also have Guiding Light fan, CC. Hi, Sandra. Love the interview. Oh. <laughs> Guiding <laughs> light in the room. <laughs> Guiding light in the house. Yes, representing the soaps. But but yeah, that just back to what you just said, Sandra. That's I always say that too. If you don't have ultimate passion, if it doesn't, if it doesn't burn inside, you do something else because exactly. it's, it's very tough to 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 get through this without. And so many people think that they're going to get Especially rich now. or famous. Yeah, but so many people think they're going to get rich and famous. I said, don't. It's you just have true. to. You just have to love what you do. And if that, if you're blessed to get that, then that's that's great. You, but, make, you have to have the passion, but you also have to have talent too. Absolutely, I, absolutely. I didn't say that, but you got to have some semblance of talent. Absolutely. And, and uh, but but the passion and the commitment, and. Uh, you know, studying, study and, and watch great films with great actors and just study everything, everything. Watch people on the street. I, that's why I love New York. I, I get to see the most fascinating characters in New York City. <laughs> People Absolutely. watching in New York City is, is phenomenal. It, it is. is. It and, is. I used to, yeah. pick up behavioral things from these people, you know, Absolutely. the way you walk. The way they talk, uh, yep. it, it's all going to, you just take it in and one day you're going to end up doing that part. Absolutely. Early in my career as an actor, like I, I would go to rest stops and just sit for hours and watch different cultures and different people interact with each other. And it just gave me so much insight on we're all the same, but we all just have different quirks and of different course. ways we go about things. And and I learned so much by just sitting there with just sitting in the back and watching different types of families come in and of different cultures. And it, like I said, in the same in Philly or New York or L.A., it's people are just interesting subjects. To they watch, are. So they so, are. Absolutely. And that's where we get our inspirations. 
Absolutely. So, Mr. Ridgely, oh, would you? Oh, well, I, I, I have to mention one thing. I, I can't Please. even fathom when, when she was referring to the soap opera and friggin' Miami, 30 pages you have to memorize? I'm not exaggerating either. <laughs> no, no, I don't think you are. I, mean, I, I just, I, I couldn't. Yeah, I know that sounds crazy, but I, there was one time when they even gave me 60 pages because we were doing two different shows. And I, I said to them, don't ever do this to me again. <laughs> I through it. But I wow. said, I, 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 you know, I can't handle this. And, you know, it was because they liked, they would give me long monologues to do because I was good mm -hmm. at monologues. But I said, you know, this is taxing on my brain and my mind. I, I don't know which, yeah, any. Anyway. Yeah. It was, <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Sandra, can you please tell our audience where they can follow you online and well, follow okay, up with I, your projects? Well, I am on Instagram. What happened to everyone? No, uh, the I, TV I, just gave you the floor. I, I gave <laughs> oh. you the floor with a close-up. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I'm, on, I'm on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Sandra Santiago NYC. It is. And I'm, I'm on Facebook. And actually, uh, I wanted to ask you, Brandon, uh, I want, I, I need some help because I need to get like a website or I need to get like what you did. You put all these pictures together because I looked at my IMDP page and it's just people just putting stuff and it's, it's not in order and it's too much Miami Vice and it's not enough yeah. of these other things I've done. So I need to do, I need to get more organized, but I, so will, I would love to, I would love to help you. Yeah. We can definitely talk after this. I mean, yeah, did this week and I'll definitely, I've, I've, be, I've become Not pretty after. decent at it just because I've had to do it for my own self. So I just, I've had to learn everything myself. So, so yeah, I'd love to, love to help you uh, get everything in order. Because this is the new way, I guess. Everybody has to have a page and a this, and a, I, you know, I'm not, and it's anyway. Absolutely, yeah. But Violet just said, "Let's help her we through can that." Help yeah, her out. Yeah. Somebody said we can help her out. Yes, ah. yes, yes. It, Violet it's all part CJ, of the, the yeah. Escape Network. Absolutely, <laughs> CJ is one of our, our our great hosts on another uh, wait, show on Monday. I, I I asked you. I said I can't get a check on my Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. When you messaged well, me a couple of weeks ago well, about I the blue check. I see people that no one you knows. You have to verify yourself. Checks. Yes. Yes, but she she was trying, and they were giving. They weren't. They weren't letting her. They never gave it to me. They were like denying it, and I'm like, I so see I, people so who I, have. Go ahead. I please. know people have no credits who have a check, and so I'm like, what the hell? What's this yeah. all about? Yeah, it's kind of strange. They do the same thing on Facebook as well. So yeah. verify your account. There's, there's a method that I'm know, trying to figure out. Yeah. I don't even know if it's so important, but. I, I want to do it finally, just yeah. to, and, you know. Absolutely. So everybody sure. knows it's just you. It's not Absolutely. the fake you. <laughs> yeah, it's the real you. Yeah. So again, because yeah. there are fake pages that people try to get get money out of people, celebrities or different people. So you want to yeah. have that verification that it's right. the real Sandra Santiago and not someone who's trying to scam someone out of money or whatever. So. So and yeah, so so absolutely. I'll definitely we'll, we will definitely we talk to well. tonight. Well, I yeah. mean, for me, it's not time, so I have to. <laughs> absolutely no. I mean, this week we'll definitely talk. And and okay. Violet helped me through a lot of that as well because she's, oh, she's been in this business a long time, so so she can help us as well. But uh, and CJ is amazing with a lot of the stuff he does for his shows. So uh, but Sandra, I just wanted to say again, thank you so much for amazing, amazing. You are definitely an outlaw. You are an inspiration to oh, millions like and millions of young women and men like myself that, like I said, growing up in the 80s, uh, Joe as well, growing up in the 80s, 80 seeing representation. I'm sorry. Seeing, absolutely. Seeing representation like yourself, strong representation was was very integral in me becoming the person that I am today as an actor, filmmaker, and writer and everything. So thank you so much. Like Violet said, you're a classy lady. And thank you. And I I like when I see your work coming out too in, in on the Instagram and 
Facebook. Absolutely. And I, and we definitely will cross paths and work together because I'm going to have some projects cooking up that, that your name is on. So uh, and it'll be it'll be an absolute honor to, to, to work with you one day. Scott Meany, another fantastic uh, host of one of the shows, says wow. wonderful interview. Uh, he has a show on Saturday night. And uh, yeah. So again, Sandra, thank you for staying up late for us. This has thank been you. an absolute honor. Thank you for being real and telling us the, the truth. Like nothing. Well, I hope I wasn't truth. rude to anybody. Uh, no, uh, the, the, the key thing is to, and our audience will concur as with Joe, is that we just want people to be, be honest, be, be open because when you're when you're sugarcoating things like you're not getting the you're not getting the real talk as far as what this business is about and there's a lot of ups and downs there's depression there's yeah. artists that have come on yeah. that have talked about struggles with anxiety and there's a lot of things that you you see the good in the red carpet but you don't see a lot of the store hear a lot of the stories of the, the struggles so i appreciate you you stating some of those for our audience so it's very much appreciated well, if I ever get the nerve to finish my memoir or to actually edit it and fix it, you know. Please do. I saw a photo of that on your Facebook. Like, you should continue that because that, that well, would I be really inspirational. I wrote, oh, I okay. I wrote diaries my entire life. Oh, okay. I, I, saw, a, I saw a cover. I saw a cover on one of the photos. So well, that's to just a mock-up. But, you know, oh, okay. I, I have diaries since I was 13. Oh, okay. All through the 90s, all through the 80s. I'm sure it would be a bestseller. <laughs> I, I'm sure it would be an absolute bestseller, just like Soleil Moon Fry just put out a documentary that's amazing about her videos that were taken all throughout her career from Punky Brewster all the way to, to current yeah. time. And again, it, it, it fills in the blanks of a lot of, of up and down years that she had. And I'm sure you could inspire a lot of a lot of people with with your memoirs so i'm gonna mm -hmm. keep cheering you on for that too sean smithson great show and wonderful guest thank you sean <laughs> thank you uh but again again sandra thank you so much and uh and, and get 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 figuring things out for uh for your website and everything okay. <laughs> again it was it was an absolute pleasure you enjoy your weekend i will you too you thank too. you it thank was great you. seeing bye you bye, -bye now bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. What an awesome guest. Holy cow. I, I'm in the background. My jaw just going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had the privilege of meeting her like again at a mob con in uh, Atlantic city and couldn't have been a sweeter, sweeter, nicer, nicer woman and just a class act. And again, thank you, Sandra Santiago for coming on IOU and you definitely will not be the last time because we'll definitely down the road to have you come back and hopefully talk about your memoirs and other projects, the new stuff that you're doing. So, so again, I want to thank uh, everybody that watched Violet. Thank you. Thank you. CJ, Steve, TK, Scott, Sean, Everybody else that watched, uh, the, the gentleman or, or lady that watched from Guiding Light, thank you all for watching IOU. Uh, this, is a, this is a grassroots thing that our man here, Joe, like started many years ago, but we're, we're building it up. We're continuing to roll this, uh, roll so, this train. And, uh, I, I got to touch on one thing, man. You, you, you caught that, right? Larry Wilcox was up for the part of Crockett. That's when uh, he was still in Chips. And I know I, that him and Ponch were friggin' going back and forth. I had no idea. I didn't know a lot of things that, that I found out tonight. <laughs> could you imagine oh, Larry Wilcox? I could not imagine that the, that it would have been what it ended up being. But and again, it it's feathered blonde hair. <laughs> But again, it's it's amazing when you look back in the history of cinema or television, the choices that were made, like even Eric Stoltz is Marty McFly. Like, and, yeah. and, and again, I mean, uh, Eric Stoltz is a fantastic actor, Mask and uh, some kind of wonderful, amazing films. But again, that what would that the have been the, the fly part two? But again, would that have transformed his career to become a mega, mega star like like Michael J. Fox already was? on that ascension with family ties. But again, it's a situation where it's, it's interesting when you see the, the, the actors that were first thought of for certain things, even Brandon Lee is Neo. I mean, again, that's totally different than the portrayal that Keanu Reeves gave us, which was again, a great portrayal. So 
so yeah so um again thank you all for watching and uh and again thank you to the amazing sandra santiago for coming on here and to you joe for the amazing support uh what's up what's up for the india escape network this weekend my friend Oh, you're putting me on the spot this weekend. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? We got. Do, uh, do we have uh, Scott tomorrow night? Do we have? Oh, oh, we have the the special that's going to replay tomorrow. Um, that happy horror holiday spectacular spectacular, spectacular is going to awesome. replay tomorrow night on the Indie Escape Network. Uh, awesome. Scott Meany's Scott Meany, uh, awesome. show. Yes, and then uh, Sunday night we have Dave Lee Madison's The End of the Night and. <laughs> but, Un momento, por favor. but please uh, watch please support every all all these amazing shows from cj gabe steve daniela ray david scott Chiafo. i mean gosh this this is just uh like i said this is grassroots we're building it up every week and we're uh also making kurt on thursday nights with uh with their show it's just again this is something that uh we're daniela really proud of and ray yep. uh absolutely once a month on thursdays and our new thursday. addition scotty who uh just uh we just uh showed uh, the other night who's going to go live next month correct correct and uh, thank you cj uh jim yeah. kurt on end of the night on yeah Sunday. oh jim kurt uh, thank you very Crutt. much uh, Mr. Crutt. sorry he was the uh, jim Crutt. Jim helicopter Crutt. zombie in one of the living dead movies night of uh, the dawn of the dead dawn of the dead Oh, Sounds okay. Right. Yes, yes. The Ken Foray. Yes, yes. And awesome. he was also yes. in uh, Libby and Matt's film, uh, Darkness. Wait. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, which you can watch, which you can watch on Tubi TV. Tubi, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so yeah, so thank you again. Thank you, audience, for sticking with us. This is a little bit longer of a show, but an amazing show because of our amazing guest. And thank you again, Sandra Santiago. Everybody have a great week. And remember, believe in the power of yourself and the right others. Peace, everybody. Have a great weekend.